Diane in Denmark here. What day is it? It is Thursday, which is a little Friday, as they say in Danish, Lille Freire. But it's not just any old Thursday. Today is, uh, if you're watching this, the day that I'm making it. This is Thursday the 25th of January. And if you are uh, Scottish or of Scottish descent, you might know that this is Burns Night. Uh, Burns Night is um, a, an evening around the world where, where Scots uh, around the world celebrate Robert Burns, Rabbi Burns, our national poet. And well, I'm just, this is an old book that I've got of uh, the complete illustrated poem, poem, songs and ballads of Robert Burns. And it's, it's a funny thing because when, when I, you know, I lived, uh, I was born in Scotland, lived there until I was 21. And then I moved to, to Luxembourg to work at the European Court of Justice. And before I arrived, you know, I, I went to live in Luxembourg. And until then, I had no idea about Burns Night. It wasn't something, you know, in my family, we never ate uh, haggis on Burns Night. Uh, and it was only when I got to Luxembourg that I discovered that um, Scots around the world are really into having, you know, a Burns Supper. And, uh, and I got kind of dragged into that. And it's funny because, as I say, when, when I lived at home in Scotland, it wasn't a, a thing. I think it's become more popular now over the years uh, because, I mean, I'm talking like 30 years ago when, when I last lived in Scotland. But uh, it, it's one of those things, you know, the, the further away you get from Scotland, uh, the more your accent um, increases. Though I, I don't have a strong Scottish accent, as you know, because I'm from Edinburgh, so I, I'm, I speak uh, quite easily understandable English, I hope. Um, but anyway, let, let's dive into it. Today, I, I thought I would show you how uh, I make haggis pie. I've mentioned it before, and if you're following me on Instagram, you'll, you'll have seen it on, you know, when, when I say what we're having for dinner, you'll have seen me posting that we're having haggis pie. Now, it's nothing fancy, and I don't want you all to run away because we're using a, a tin of haggis and some neeps and stuff. Uh, but I am also going to show you what we're going to have for dessert. That's a bit more exciting and it's like a deconstructed millionaire shortbread. You know, shortbread uh, and then some chocolate sauce, caramel sauce. Anyway, so it, if, if you're not into haggis, look away now and then come back when we do the dessert. Uh, and you'll see today, normally I put on my apron. Uh, and today I've put on a wee Scottish sash. Now, this isn't actually a long enough sash, but I thought it was quite good because it, it'll save me from trailing my sash into the food. Uh, I've got it tied uh, clanswoman style, which goes kind of across uh, the chest and over the right shoulder. And then you can fix it with a, um, a brooch. And I was doing the declutter of jewellery yesterday and there were some people asking about brooches. There's some you can do with your brooch. Now, normally, if you would have a longer sash, and if you're if you're invited to burn supper, you don't know what to wear. Just wear like a white blouse or you know a black top, like I'm doing here today. And if you've got um, you know a, a tartan-looking scarf, uh, we say tartan. What, what do you say in the states? They call it plaid or something. Anyway, we we call it tartan. Um, and what you, you would do is just take it and kind of uh, drape over your shoulder and you can fix it um, at the hip, you know, and, and again put a wee brooch on it. Anyway, as I said, I, I've got this one on today and I found a photo. Let me just see if I can find it. Here we are. Here's me and my friend Mary. Now this, this photo is like 25, 30 years old and here we are uh, and I've got... We, we had matching sashes at the time. Now, this isn't a burnt supper we were at. This was uh, some other party where we had to wear something Scottish. And I've still got um, the, the neck scarf. So the other thing that you could do is just, you know, wear a neck scarf and tie that with a wee brooch. Anyway, let's get on to the food. Now, I've already washed my hands. And it, it's, it's not really a recipe as such. It's just putting things together. And I use tinned haggis because I can't get the fresh stuff. 
um, you may be able to get it imported where you are, but we just can't get it here and it doesn't really matter because it's the, it's the thought that counts. Now, when you, and, and the haggis pie that I make, it's basically, I call it ha haggis pie because it's a bit like shepherd's pie. You know, shepherd's pie with the ground up um, lamb and, you know, you top it with potatoes. I'm just doing the same thing here. So, without further ado, let's go on with the uh, let's go on with the food. Let me see if I can put. Oh, there we are. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. So I've got an oven-proof dish here. I've got my tin of haggis, and okay, you want to? Okay, if, if you're squeamish, look away now. Here we are. This is what it. Let, let me take a wee bit out so you can see. It's like because it's a bit difficult to get out. And I feel really weird not wearing my pinny today, but anyway, let's go with the flow. Right, here we are. Do you see what it looks like? It's um, quite kind of grainy, and it's kind of got white bits and brown bits and other bits that you don't want to know about. Uh, and I'm not sure if I should really tell you what's in it, <laughs> but basically it's like a sheep's stomach. And all I do, I don't... Uh, I'm not going to heat this up first, but this, this is going to go in the oven. And what I do is I just break it up out of the tin. Get it out. Ah. There we are. See, there we go. And one tin of haggis is actually enough for us, because we're having the dessert as well. Anyway, you just want to break it up a bit with a fork. And it's really not, uh, it's really not great to look at this, but you know, quite, quite, quite a lot of um, good food around the world does not look, I mean, if you saw on Instagram last night, we were having a Medista person, which also looks rather suspect, um, but tastes good. So there we are. Right, here we are. Let me just get my dot. Uh, knife. Right, so first of all, I've got I've got the haggis in here, and I've just flattened it out. That's all. And then, oops, mm, it's even good cold. Now, haggis, you should know, has got a lot of um, spices in it, and it's very, very. It's quite salty, but it's really peppery, so you don't need to add anything at all to it. And it's funny because when I was a child, I, was really, I didn't like haggis at all. We ate it occasionally at home, not that much. Um, but now every time I go home, I've got to have haggis. It's one of, I think it's because I'm getting older and I like the kind of weird taste. Like I'm really into strong cheese uh, and started eating oysters. And Anyway, so the haggis is in. And then the next thing, we're going to top it um, with... Like, if you were going to a brown supper, you would get the haggis, which is kind of carried in, and you've got the um, the piper piping it in, and then they get the ski and do out, you know, they get the uh, the knife and, you know, ceremoniously and cut the haggis. And then you would have it with um, bashed neeps and champatatis. Now, I'll, I'll show you what I've done for that. Normally in Scotland we would uh, neeps or turnip. Now, when I was living in Luxembourg uh, and I went to these burn suppers, it was really difficult for them to get uh, neeps, uh, turnip, because in France um, turnip is called uh, navi, uh, and, and it's got weird. It's got. Uh, um, I'm trying to think what it's called in. Let me see. Did I write down the Swedish name? Um, in Danish it's called Mayo, and in Swedish it's called Hova, um, German it's called Lube, um, Italian is called Larapa, uh, and it's a bit like Rutabaga, I think, um, in, in American. And, and basically, um, <laughs> turnip, you know, in, in French-speaking countries and uh, in most of Europe, it's something that you feed to animals. It's not something that... <laughs> That, that, that people eat, you know, it's, it's a really poor crop that is given to, to cattle to eat. But I managed to track down some, and there was some, the closest I could get in the supermarket here is Ruta Bega. 
or rutabaga, I don't know how you pronounce it, uh, or uh, kolrabi, uh, kolrabi as it's called in Danish. And that's kind of close enough, you'll, you'll see it's, it's like a root, it's like a, um, and kohlrabi is a cross between a turnip and cabbage, I think. And when you're cooking it, the smell of it, it smells close enough to turnip. And it changes colour slightly, it kind of comes a deeper, um, a deeper yellow than this. So what I do is I've, I took half the kohlrabi and half the carrots, and what I did was I peeled them, um, chopped them up a bit and I've uh, cooked them in water, a wee, a wee drop of water, and here it is now, and then I mashed it up a bit. Now you can see there, if I can just show you, can you see there's kind of, ye the yellow is the ruta rutabaga or kohlrabi, and the orange is the carrot, because the, the kohlrabi um, is a bit more of a bitter taste, Tur tur turnip is much sweeter, so that's why I mixed it with the, the carrot. So all I did with that was I cooked it just in a little water, let it go soft, and then I used my potato masher. Uh, just a wee bit of salt, and it's, it's really nice and sweet. And that's gonna be the next layer on our pie. So let me get that on. And when, when you're cooking kohlrabi, it, it does smell like turnip. I mean, it just, oh, it takes me back to um, living back home with mum and dad. Because my daughter said this, this morning, because uh, I was doing this just after she had her breakfast, and she was like, mum, what's, what's that smell? And yeah, it's the, uh, it's the turnipy stuff. Right, anyway. Mmm, yeah, that's good. Anyway, get that out of the way. So I'm just layering my mix on the top. And remember, this is not at all to be fancy because there is nothing fancy, uh, you know, about a burnt supper. All right, here we are. Right, you see? So pop that on top, and, and, and I'm doing it in this um, dish, this glass dish that you can see the layer. So you've got the haggis, and then you've got the, uh, I've done uh, carrot and kohlrabi. If you can get turnip, great, uh, or swede, as you call it in England, and, and if you're living in, Eng in England, but sweet is also slightly different from turnip. Anyway, and then the last part of our pie, our haggis pie, uh, I did the same with um, some potatoes. I just boiled the potatoes in water, and then I've mashed them and put quite a lot, uh, quite a lot of uh, butter in them. Uh, and a wee drop salt and pepper. Not, I haven't put much uh, pepper in the in the mashed potatoes because really it, it doesn't need it. There's so much uh, pepper in the haggis. And hold on, I'll just do a wee bit more salt because I love my uh, salt and pepper that lights up and makes sound of uh, Star Wars fighters. There we are. Okay, that's enough of that. And when I make mashed potato, I don't take the skins off. You know, my dad. He couldn't stand having skin on potatoes and he would sit and peel the potatoes and, and he never really uh, got onto the fact that, you know, there's a lot of goodness in the potato skins. He just didn't like getting, you know, having potato skins. So, and we've always only had skin on the potatoes, you know, uh, because well, I, I can't be bothered with all that peeling and, and the potato skins are good for you. And when uh, we went on a holiday, this is me and my husband and the kids, we went on, on this kind of bed and breakfast thing in Moon. Uh, Moon is a fantastic uh, Danish island. Go and have a wee look at it where they've got white cliffs. It would be fantastic. And we stayed at this little bed and breakfast and my daughter raved about it and that she had loved uh, the food. This is my DD15 when she was about, about nine or 10 years old. And we thought, well, you know, the food was good, but, you know, it was homemade. And and, you know, and she just raved on and on about it. And it was because she said they had those white potatoes. And it was because the lady at the B&B, she had actually peeled the potatoes. And my daughter had never actually had, like, peeled potatoes, but peeled potatoes before. So occasionally now I'll actually take the time and peel some potatoes. And she thinks that's a, a real luxury. 
Anyway, back to the haggis pie. Right, so I've got my potato mash here. I'll tell you, it's definitely not pretty this, but any, you know what, it's really good. And it's an easy thing to make. There we And it is funny now uh, to think that we, we never celebrated uh, Burns, but, you know, when, when I lived at home, but, um, you know, I got to Luxembourg and it was a huge thing in Luxembourg. There's a lot of Scottish people living in Luxembourg uh, and it, it was really difficult to get tickets to uh, the Burns night because everybody wanted to go and the only way I could get tickets was that I ended up doing the... Um, you know, they, they have various kind of speeches throughout the night and people recite things. And then there's a toast to the lassies where the men, um, you know, uh, somebody gives a speech about the women. And then there's the ladies, the, the lassies reply. And uh, that was the only way I could get onto the guest list was because I offered to, to do the, the speech. <gasps> Gosh, that was nerve wracking. And I had a lot of uh, vitamin D that night. And, and um, vitamin D was our code name for Drambuie. I, I do not drink uh, whiskey. It's funny because every time people find out I'm Scottish, oh, you must like whiskey and uh, Braveheart. I don't like whiskey. Sorry, I really don't like whiskey. Uh, I quite like Drambuie, but I had so much vitamin D uh, Drambuie that night that's kind of. Put me off that. Anyway, long time ago, long time ago. Right. Okay, all these things will be going into the dishwasher, which is emptied. Right. So, in here we've got the haggis, we've got the mashed or uh, champet uh, tatties and the turnip and or, um, kohlrabi and carrot. So that's our wee haggis pie. I'm not going to finish cooking it uh, right now. I'm going to do it when the, when the, you know, later tonight when we're having dinner. I'll just put it into the oven, 200 uh, Celsius, which is 400 F, and it'll take about 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Just when you can see it's kind of um, heated up here because the haggis is already cooked. The, the, this one from the tin just needs to be heated through. So that, that's my haggis pie. Okay, and all the squeamish people, you can come back into the room now. I'll put this over here right now. Get rid of my haggis. And then we'll get on with a wee dessert, which is hopefully a bit more uh, interesting. Like this. So let me just stop filming because you don't need to watch me doing this. Right, I'm just in a wee pooper, you know, I pick up and put away. I really can't stand having things there. It's much nicer to get it straight into the dishwasher. Anyway, wash my hands again and we are ready to make uh, a wee dessert. And as I said to you, um, it, it's like a deconstructed millionaire shortbread. Millionaire shortbread is um, a, a shortbread base, you know, it's baked in a tin and then it's covered in a thick uh, caramel and then there is um, a topping of, um, I like it best with dark chocolate. And you, you can, you know, you make it in the tin and then you can cut it up into squares. And I haven't got time to do that today. So I'm doing a deconstructed uh, millionaire shortbread dessert. Now, if you were going to like a, a proper burn supper, Probably you'd have something like Cranachan. Uh, Cranachan is a Scottish dessert. You, you, I mean, go go and Google it. Don't don't ask me for a recipe. There's a hundred different ways of making it. But basically, it's uh, toasted oats and whipped cream and uh, raspberries and a wee bit of whiskey. And as I said, I don't like whiskey. So, uh, and, and my kids are not a huge um, huge fans of Cranachan anyway. But I know. <laughs> I know they like this. And I'm using up stuff that I have, uh, and I haven't had to go out and buy stuff. This is stuff that I had on hand. Now, I'm not making, uh, if you want to go ahead and make some shortbread, that's great, but I'm, I'm going for the kind of quick and easy version. And Nessie here is going to help me, right, Nessie? So I'm using some shortbread. We've, we've got a really nice tin of shortbread. And this is the thing, you know. I always say I'm a canny Scot, and you know, Scottish people would like to save money, but Scottish people are so, 
Darn Kind. Um, this is a, a really nice box of shortbread that I got from my brother's fiance's uh, mum and dad. So hello to uh, Sylvia and James. I know Sylvia's always watching. Uh, and you know, they're just, uh, people are just so kind. And, and anyway, so I've got a nice box of shortbread here. And I've also got some broken bits of shortbread here, which is fantastic for our little dessert. Now, the, the family will, will make their own tonight because then they can put in how much they want of each thing. But I'm just going to make one for you just now to show you what you could do. Now, if you, and I've got a couple of glasses here. It's quite nice uh, to make this in a glass that you can see the layers. Uh, and if you've got, I know that, I mean, these are um, brandy glasses that we never, we never drink brandy. And we got them when we got married. These are from Holmegor. Yeah, Holmegor. Uh, we got all our glass from our Danish family. You've seen the special china that we have. That was from all our colleagues and friends that were working with in Luxembourg. And a uh, Scottish family, they bought us uh, silver cutlery. So that, that's where all our stuff comes from. So anyway, and I think I'll put it in this um, brandy or cognac glass because it looks nice. And all you're going to do is like take some shortbread, and shortbread's really crumbly, uh, and just break it up. I won't do too much because I'm going to eat this one right now. Okay, a wee bit of shortbread, and then... You would normally have like the caramel sauce on, on millionaire shortbread. Uh, and here in, um, in, the, in our local Swedish supermarket, you know, we've got a summer house in Sweden, uh, a weekend cabin that we use a lot. In the Swedish supermarket, I found they have ready-made caramel sauce, you know, like dulce, de leche, you, you know, you probably know that. Uh, and basically it's, you know, normally if you're making this recipe in Scotland, you would have the tin of condensed milk and you know you'd be boiling it for six weeks this is really easy because it comes ready done i've got one here to show you there we are so it's just really caramel sauce so a wee bit of caramel sauce mm, i love i love condensed milk and carnation milk and and then, and then, of course, you can put in as much as you want. I'm just doing a wee one here to show you the, the principle of it. And then you could add maybe some nice uh, scoop of vanilla ice cream. I'm not big into ice cream unless it's summer and unless it's rum and raisin or coconut. And this wouldn't go with this anyway. Uh, and what I'll do for tonight is we'll whip up some cream. So we have some whipping cream, but I'll, just to show you, I've got one of these ready made things that we sometimes use for um on hot chocolate okay we both create a wee drop more of shortbread in it and a wee bit more caramel sauce and get it out uh, and then the base part some chocolate sauce. Now you could serve it hot as if you were doing like um, uh, une dame blanche, um, if you know what that is. And all I've done with this is I, I, I like dark chocolate. I've taken equal quantities of dark chocolate and equal quantity of, uh, you know, pouring cream uh, and a wee knob of butter and I've just melted it. So it's kind of runny consistency. And then you put the chocolate on the top. Oh, how good does that look? Yummy. And as I say, you know, you, you, can, you can build it up and you can add more uh, shortbread if you like, or a scoop of ice cream would be nice. Um, but you can have a wee look in there, right? And I'm, of course, here we are. I'm, of course, I'm gonna taste it, just because, you know, I would hate for you to go away and, uh, you know, have a bad experience with this. Right, I want to show you me eating, because I know a lot of people don't like uh, watching other people eating, but I'm just trying to... Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> I really... <laughs> Hold on, I haven't got the sharp bread yet. Mmm. Whoa, that 
is intense with the uh, chocolate sauce. Okay, but just be aware it is extremely sweet, but you know, in Scotland we, we have sweet tooths. I mean, you've got shortbread, which is made of butter, sugar, and flour. <laughs> and then you've got the caramel, which is just basically um, uh, milk, sugar, uh, and then the chocolate sauce and the cream. But oh, anyway, I, I wouldn't I want you anymore and waste your time. You know, I hate wasting your time with, with these videos. Anyway, uh, I hope I gave you some inspiration if you're going to do a wee bit of um, uh, Burns Night tonight. And when you sit down for your, your dinner, even if you're not having haggis pie uh, or a deconstructed millionaire shortbread dessert, you could uh, maybe see the Selkirk Grace. Now, the Selkirk Grace is just like, you know, saying... Uh, uh, you know, we prayer before you start eating. A lot of people think it's Robert Burns. I'm not sure it's actually Robert Burns, but it's attributed to Robert Burns. But anyway, uh, some, uh, I'll say it to you in Scots and then, then I'll translate. Okay. Some he meet and canna eat, and some wad eat that want it. But we he meet and we can eat, say so let the Lord be thanked. And that means... Uh, some people have food and they can't eat it and some people want to have uh, food but, but can't but we have food and we can eat so let's praise the Lord. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me, Diane in Denmark uh, on uh, Burns Night, 25th of January. Uh, that's all for me and Nessie. All that's left to say is um, live long and prosper. Lang may your lum reek, you know, may your chimney be forever blowing out smoke uh, and I'll see you very soon. Okay, bye for now.